Hey guys, it is Surreality here, and today I'm doing a little fun video, I think. Um, I wanted to do a video on uh, the ultimate skills in this game, and so I'm actually doing a tier list for... Uh, I, wanna make, I, I wanted to make a tier list for the uh, all the ultimate skills in this game, sort of rating them based off on how uh, they sort of function, like how effectively they function in a match. Um, how cool they look, I think, because some of them do look cooler than others, uh, and maybe a couple other factors that I'll think about as I do it. Um, but here, I'll even show. I have my tier list already set up, so it's all good. I have all of the skills, and you can see all the tier lists from godlike to BM only. Um, again, godlike is essentially just, it's an amazing ultimate. There's no reason why you shouldn't be running it. Pretty good is just, you know... It's a good ultimate, might have some counterplay, but it's still a really good ultimate to use, um, and many people should use it. Viable just means that it's maybe not the best option, but it's certainly not that bad. Um, and then specific game mode only is essentially, there are some ultimates in this game that I think only do well on very specific game modes, and then don't do well in like deathmatch, which is like the main game mode that I'm talking about. Um, and then BM only is essentially, it's such a bad skill that if you're using it, you should only be using it to BM your opponent. Um, and I can't think of any other reason why you would use it. But um, I'm also going to be doing it, so like I said, this is primarily based off on Deathmatch, which is what the specific game mode only applies to CTF and uh, Conquest. Uh, and I will also be doing this uh, going from sort of the release of each karma, so I'll be doing it in that order, so Sword, Bow, Fist, Witch, and then DS Hammer, all that stuff, all the way up to Aegis Knight. Uh, so, let us first start out with Sword Ult 1. So Sword Ult 1 is called Raging Strike, uh, and it looks like this. I do have the action camera enabled, sort of, to show off the... I guess, cool part of the skills, although notably my character's short. Turns out when your character's really short, the action camera sometimes I don't think fits all of your character in, so you sort of only get like the top half of the face of your character. I don't know if that's intentional or not, or if they just assume that you wouldn't make your character super small. But anyway, so Raging Strike, it's a pretty simple skill um, if you hit the person. I think I got a little bit of a frame drop there, but you saw the zoom in. Here, I'll do it again real quick, because I think it dropped frames there. Yeah, there we go. And of course, that did around 9k. Usually it does anywhere from like 8 to 10k I've seen, maybe even like 11k on a Slayer. Uh, and of course, if you whiff... Uh, you are left open for a couple seconds, actually. Uh, you can't even shift until right there. Um, to be honest, I think that the skill, in terms of how cool it looks, especially when you look at some of the other ultimates, I don't actually think it's a really... It, it's not a bad-looking ultimate, but in my opinion, it's not actually that cool. Um, but again, these are just my opinions, and I'm not just going off of how visually appealing it is. Uh... In terms of where I'd actually put it on the tier list, so technically, oh here, this is supposed to be in front of, it eh, doesn't really matter. Um, I'd probably put Raging Strike in the pretty good category, um, primarily because it's still really good ultimate. Most sword players that you see will be running this, um, and... The reason why is because, well, since they've changed the damage accumulation stuff and the comma limit, uh, it's still it's it's a lot better now, um, and it was better even before the uh, combo limit stuff. It's really really good for team play. Like if you you can catch multiple people in it, or maybe just one person in it, and you'll be hitting them with a raging strike, and your partner could like cast lightning on them, or fireball, or black hole, or whatever, and just add in a bunch of extra damage, which is why it's so good. Um, however, I wouldn't put it into the godlike tier because it has one really bad problem, and that is the fact that it is super punishable, regardless of whether you whiff or not. Because if you whiff, I already showed you, you can get punished. 
But even if you hit it, you actually are still vulnerable after the very last hit of the attack, and you can literally have an enemy charge up Moonslash on you while you're hitting the, the other enemy, and even though you'll have done all your hits and you, you should be the one winning, uh, you'll just end up taking a, a fit full, uh, fully charged Moonslash and you can't do anything about it. Um, so there is definitely counterplay to it, that's why you have to really rely on your teammates when you use this skill, but it does do pretty good damage actually for an ult one, especially for a breaker ult one when you compare it to some of the others. Uh, so that's why I have it in the pretty good category. So next up, we have Infinite Blade, I believe it's called. Yeah, Infinite Blade. So Infinite Blade is a nice skill as well. Um, they actually upgraded the visual for this as well since you do a little turn. Uh, this is what it looks like without the launcher, and then you do the little spin there, uh, and your blade becomes a lot longer. In fact, I think I can WWLMV them from like this angle, yeah. So pretty decent range, especially for a command like that. I don't think it actually increases your tracking though. So even though the range like might be able to hit them from there, it won't track there. But uh, there's that, and then of course, if you actually do the left click follow up. You get all this, uh, you get the chase, attack, and you can follow up. And to be honest, I actually really do like this skill. I do think it's sort of an underrated skill, because it does increase your damage output on sword. So if you are running double breaker, this actually isn't too bad of an idea if you need a damage out, uh, if you need an increase in damage output, because it does increase your overall damage in general, and it increases your range. I don't know if it increases the break of your attacks. I actually don't know. I don't think it does. I think it's just damage and range, but I could be wrong about that. Um, but either way, so in terms of where I'd put it in the tier list though, I'd probably put it near the top of the viable category. Now of course we don't actually have anything else in there, but I'd probably put it in the viable category. Obviously there is a downside to all the buff ultimates, and that's are you actually going to be able to you know, get and a, a good amount of damage out of it, like how well are you going to be able to use the ult too, right? Like that's the trade-off for buff ults, is if you hit somebody with an ult too, that doesn't guarantee that you're going to be able to produce the same amount of damage you would have been able to do if you just simply hit them with the ult one. Um, so that is always the downside of it. Um, and again, a lot of people didn't really use it back in the day, mainly due to the fact that there was a bug where the chase wouldn't launch uh, if you did the follow-up after activating it. Uh, I will say though, um, I think the chase works a lot more now, um, and it's also actually sort of a frame trap. Uh, if you activate the ultimate and they shift, you can do the chase attack follow-up anyway, and it can catch their dodge roll, and you can actually launch them and continue the combo anyway, uh, which is really nice. But again, obviously, it has the downside of... You know, it, it relies purely on you. Like, if you activate that ultimate, even if it hits the person, if you get caught by the other enemy and then you just die because you're already at, like, 20% health, like, yeah, it's sort of worthless in that case. So, um, there definitely is that downside. But I, I do think it is better, and I, I do think it is underrated. Um, and I would recommend it in a double breaker build. Maybe not so much in a breaker slayer build, though. Alright, so moving on to bow. Uh, actually, hold up, let me... Move it back. There we go. Alright, so on to bow. So we have Great Spirits Ascent. Now this ultimate has actually had a lot of changes over the uh, months. Um, and I think it's recently been pretty good. Uh, so obviously if you hit Q, you enter a stance and there's a new animation there. Uh, the little flip of the arrow. Left click, and you launch the bird. And it goes off for a pretty decent distance. Actually, has a pretty big hitbox. I think you can still hit the person even if I aim it like here. Yeah, that is a pretty wide hitbox. Um, its damage isn't consistent depending on where you hit it, but uh, it is pretty crazy. Uh, and another good thing I think that actually bumps it really high in the tier list is, uh, well, for one, you can actually combo with it. Obviously, the AI teched it too fast because the AI just texts really fast or the dummy texts on the ground really fast but you can follow up uh, off of it. it you do have to be pretty close to them though um, but also that in my opinion actually the bigger thing 
uh, is that you can turn it mid-cast. Uh, now, whether this is a bug or not, I don't know, but I sort of like the fact that this is a thing, so if I'm aiming it over here, I can actually just sort of do this mid-cast and change it uh, the direction where I'm firing it, which is what makes it really good, and it's actually really hard to dodge this if the player knows where to aim. So there is that. Uh, and so in terms of where I'd put it on the tier list, uh, I definitely would put this in the viable category. Um, I'd probably put it below uh, Raging Strike just because I don't think it has much inherent team play, but it does, and it, I, to be honest, it can do just as much damage. Like that did 9k, my Raging Strike did around 9k. So yeah, I'd probably put it a little bit below Raging Strike just because Raging Strike offers more team play. But now we have Bow Ult 2. So let me get back. Alright, so Bow Ult 2 is a Great Archer Soul. Uh, and this one's a pretty interesting ult. So it does have a new animation now where you little do you flip the arrow and sort of I don't know, do a little cut with it or something. Looks interesting enough. Uh, and it does break the opponents, although it used to be able to lead into a combo. Like I'm pretty sure it used to be able to lead into a combo. Um, and, you know, maybe it does still, like, if you already did launch them, like, maybe it does. Like, I'm not really too sure. Eh. Doesn't really look like it, it lifts them up anymore or allows you to... Because I think uh, one of the previous versions of this skill allowed you to essentially... You would cast it and then you'd have enough time to, like, WWLMB them or something before they could shift. Uh, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. Maybe it is, though. Um, but, one thing about this skill is, it's super annoying. If you don't like bow, you don't like spam, this is your worst nightmare, because essentially all my arrows lock onto you. I think I do more damage in general. I actually have higher break overall. Uh, this still doesn't do break. But, all my attacks do more break now, and of course they all home in. Salvo homes in. Not very well, though. But it does home in. Um... And I believe my action speed's faster as well, and my damage output is overall increased. Uh, so, it's definitely not a battle. Pretty good for if you like spamming and running away, uh, I'd say. Um, and so, because of that, where would I put it on the tier list? Uh, I'd probably put it in the viable category. Maybe. I don't know if I'd put it above Infinite Blade. I guess, uh, you know, I'll probably put it above it right now, just because I think uh, it's better in more builds. Like, again, I think Infinite Blade is good in Double Breaker. I don't think it's as good in Breaker Slayer, though. Um, and, of course, I mean, I do think a poke meta is still really strong in this game, and so, um, obviously, this is still going to be a very strong skill because of that. Although it does depend on your teammate, and this is the major downside, is if you are at... Uh, like, you wouldn't want to use it close to somebody. Like, you really wouldn't. Because I can just, like, shift attack you or something. Or I can charge you or something. And, again, if I run up to you in bow, and you're in bow and you shift, I'm going to re react to your shift in WWLMB or something like that. So, it's definitely got counterplay. It relies a lot on your teammate as well to defend you and peel you if you do get caught. Um, but, you know, if you're good at running and you don't get caught very often, uh, you can deal a lot of damage and be super annoying with the skill. Um, but again, the damage output might not match what you could have done if you used the uh, first bow ult, so that's why I don't have it in the pretty good tier. Alright, so uh, next is Fist Ult, or uh, next is Fist, uh, and we have Fist Ult 1, which is, of course, Falling Star. Now, personally, this skill, I think, is one of the cooler skills. Uh, and I actually forgot to go over the how cool I thought the uh, bow skills were. Um, I don't think that they're that appealing. I think the Birdle is sort of cool looking. Uh, and they did upgrade the animations on them, make them look a little more fancy. Uh, but still not that appealing to me in general. Um, but I think Falling Star actually looks pretty darn cool, uh, regardless of the action camera. Uh, you sort of just stun the opponent, and then boom, strike the ground, cause an explosion. Uh, and one of the great things about the skill is you can actually follow up uh, and get a combo after, which is really, really nice. Yeah, you can get a combo going. 
sometimes it's hard to do it depending on where the enemy goes and all that stuff and whether there's terrain but it's still possible to get a combo after it which is really nice uh, obviously it doesn't do as much damage as raging strike did so this is like five to six k um, so that is sort of a downside compared to raging strike which does like almost double the damage but unlike raging strike and this is a really good feature outside of the fact that you can combo with it which is already a plus uh, you're pretty much safe like it's super hard to punish this even if you miss like even if they dodge that and even if they dodge this there's so few frames where they can actually punish you if any before you can just shift out so it's like super safe skill uh, they did nerf the damage uh, it is sort of reactable if you miss the stun so there's that downside but you also have the upside of it. you're completely invincible during this portion of the skill you, you're literally invincible for like eight seconds and so on maps like ctf uh, you can literally stall out the flag by using this ultimate and just hovering above the flag to prevent flag caps because you can just fall down on them and they can't do anything. Um, and so that's what makes it really good uh, outside of the fact that it's also just really safe. Um, and also actually allows for some team play. Like you can stun multiple people. The stun lasts like two or three seconds. And then you can have somebody like Moonslash or something or do a fireball. Uh, and you can just then ult them or do the return strike uh, and again there's just a lot of synergy with this skill um, and of course I think it looks cool and so where would I put it on the tier list uh, I'd probably put it I think above probably put it at the top a pretty good uh, list just because I, I know raging I said raging strike does do like double the damage but you can combo out of fist ult one it's much safer and still offers about the same amount of team play as uh, Sword Ult 1. So at that point, I think Fist Ult 1 is just end ends up being better. Um, Alright, so next we have Fist Ult 2. And so Fist Ult 2 is a Devoted Awakening, and they actually did recently change both the animation and I think the way you interact with the person when you hit them. So it actually lifts them up now, which allows you to go into the strike faster. I don't actually know why I ran out of stamina there, because I'm pretty sure I timed that right. Oh, did it wrong. But yeah, you get to go into this and get a lot of damage. I think actually, how much was it again? So if I do this, and then I just do that. I mean, that already did like 9k there. Um, of course you had to be close to them, but you can use this ultimate uh, ult 2 in a combo, um, similar to sword ult 1. Uh, and also, obviously, this increases your base endurance, uh, it increases your run speed, your dash speed, I mean, literally, your uh, sprint or armored rush or whatever they call it. What do they call it? Full speed. Yeah, that turns purple, so that's pretty good. Uh, you're pretty much unstoppable with this, and of course, all your hits uh, do extra damage because you explode or you cause explosions. And you can do stuff like that, which is really cool. Of course, I mistimed it. Uh, but in general, I think this is actually one of the coolest uh, second ults in the game just because of how much it does. It's probably one of the most changing ones for your character. Um, of course it does have the downside of any ult too, which is that it decreases, or not that it decreases, but of course if you get caught right after, because it is still possible to break you even though it might seem impossible. Uh, like Devoted Awakening with, uh, 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 yeah, Devoted Awakening with the um, second ult buff actually makes you pretty much unbreakable. Um, same thing if you do Wild Flurry, actually. Wild Flurry with ult 2 is actually pretty much unbreakable as well. I don't actually think you can break it with a stun hit or Giga Swing. Don't quote me on that, you might be able to, but I'm not sure. Um, but it is still pretty good. Uh, and so I th actually think it's also one of the more un underrated skills, although I think it is becoming more popular. Um, I'd probably put it in the pretty good category right now. The reason I put it above the other two ults is because, first of all, this offers just much more than uh, these two do. It, it makes you faster, gives you more endurance, which, to be honest, those are probably two of the most important things. Like, if you had to decide on some of the most important stats in the game, 
movement speed is a highly valued one. I think the the highest valued one would be HP probably, but we don't have any skills like that anymore, thank God. Um, but endurance would be a skill that, like, if I could have an ult that raises my endurance for like 30 seconds, I would take it. Um, and this is what Devoted Awakening does. Of course, it has the downside of not being able to do that much damage if you don't hit somebody with it, and again, you can still get caught. But it's going to be harder for you to get caught anyway because you're like never going to be broken. Like You win almost every trade because uh, I think you also break more because each hit does explosions, which all add more break anyway. Um, so you're just going to break more. You're going to be more durable. You're going to win more trades with Devo uh, Devoted Awakening, which is, I think, why it's better in general. Um, and so that's why I probably put it here. But of course, I'm going to put it like below... I think I'll probably put it at the lowest part of pretty good tier because of the fact that, uh, again, you can still get caught, and this ultimate, like, even if you landed it on somebody, could end up being a waste if you immediately get caught and peeled, so um, there is that. And then, of course, I think there's more applications for Ult 1. I don't think Devoted Awakening is necessarily as good in CTF, and maybe it's better in Conquest, but in CTF, I think even uh, Falling Star would be a lot better. All right, so... Let's move on to which. So, uh, which ult two? Uh, here, I'll switch it to here. Or not which ult two, which ult one? Meteor. This one is a pretty well known skill. It's very simple. You hit Q, find the area you want to cast it on, get this little fancy animation, which they did change a little bit. Uh, and then you get to strike. Now, to be honest, the skill actually did a lot less damage than I thought it did. Uh, or that I thought than I thought it would. That only did like 5k. Raging Strike did double that, uh, and I think actually did the same amount of damage as uh, Falling Star. Um, however, there are some benefits to this skill. For one, the range is actually insane. Like this range is super insane. Like I think, yeah, this will still hit that AI. So it uh, you can still deal pretty good damage. And unlike uh, Bow Out One, with where you fire the bird, the damage is pretty consistent no matter where you hit. Uh, the person in the ultimate. Um, now it is reactable, sort of. You can anticipate and dodge this ultimate, um, and the witch caster is actually more vulnerable uh, when uh, they use the skill. So you can, like, if you use this skill, when you fall down, like I'm still vulnerable there before I can shift, so people can hit me. Uh, you can sort of. However, unlike uh, Bird Ult 1, you can actually sort of avoid this um, because you can cast the ultimate on yourself, which makes you essentially pretty hard to peel because if they do hit you, unless they hit you with a ranged attack or something, or they're comboing you with range, uh, they're not really going to be able to chase you at all or continue a combo because there's a meteor in the way. Um, so there is that benefit. Um, and of course, it's also does you can combo with it, so... You know, you can do Meteor and then you can just start, you know, spamming fireballs or something. Of course, I missed it. I think if I had more casting speed, it would work. Um, but you can combo off of it, uh, which is also something. And uh, it, So it's also really good for team synergy, which is another plus. Um, and so where would I put it on the tier list? Uh, I definitely put it in the pretty good category because I do think it's pretty good. I do think it has probably gone down, though, in popularity. Uh, I'd probably put it somewhere between, yeah, I'd probably put it between Bow Ult 1 and Raging Strike. Alright, so next up we have Witch Ult 2, which is, of course, uh, Demonic Awakening, uh, and is, my, in, is, in my opinion, I think the first uh, of the god tier skills. Uh, this skill is just, it's disgusting, to be honest, because, first of all, uh, it actually sets up for an interesting, uh, if you are close to somebody, you actually force them to burn their shift. Because unlike Bow Ult 2, um, this doesn't guarantee a combo like Fist Ult 2 or Sword Ult 2, but it does, uh, it does force a shift because what happens is you will hit them, you will break them, uh, and if they don't shift there, uh, you can then actually get a WW LMB follow-up. And then you could just go into like a fireball for an instant like 9k damage, which is insane. Uh, so uh, they, you essentially do burn a shift if you, if you do use it near somebody. Uh, and even if you don't break them, 
Uh, you don't have to worry, because with this skill, uh, you are essentially invincible, sort of. Uh, they did reduce the invincibility frames on your shift if you stand still, uh, for which. Uh, but uh, you still have like no cooldown on your shift. Uh, you can still shift to pretty much your heart's content as long as you have stamina for it. Uh, and because of the fact that, you know, stamina uh, commands don't really cost any stamina now, um, it means that shifting is uh, a lot more safer for you to do and is going to be more available for you to do. Uh, as well as the fact, uh, so this buff, or this ultimate actually sort of got indirectly buffed due to the recent changes with skill cooldowns because this drastically reduces your skill cooldown. I mean, look, my ice wall is literally going to be back in like 3, 2, 1, and it's already back. So like 6, 7 second cooldowns as compared to every other skill having like a 25 to 30 second cooldown. Even if you put the skill cooldown decreases on, I mean, most skills are at least going to be, or at most going to be, 20 seconds, whereas you have access to skills that are only going to be like 30 seconds long, um, which is insane. Uh, and then of course it increases your cast, uh, your casting speed for a couple skills. I don't think it does it for lightning, I'm not really too sure, I have no idea. Triple lightning, I don't know if it's possible to do with Demonic Awakening if it helps at all. Um, again, I don't play Witch too much. Uh, I think Ice Wall comes out a little bit faster, again not sure. What does come out faster is Fireball, which is almost instant cast, and I didn't actually... I wasn't in ult 2 there. That's not ult 2. I mean, it is, just not a witch. So if you do something where you're like this, I mean, this is literally an actual combo. And that's just like... And you could just do it again or something like that. Like, it's pretty crazy uh, how many times you can use a skill. Uh, which also makes you dangerous for poking, because again, you can do this... Uh, you can do this and just spam and then shift away, ice wall, shift away, cast lightning, shift away, fireballs back up, cast it again, shift away. Like, it's super good for poking, amazing for doing combos as well because you practically have infinite resources. Um, it also increases your break, I think, for some of your skills. Not that it matters too much though because you're a slayer, but maybe it does. Um, and then, of course, I think it also might increase your damage output, although I'm not too sure about that. It says it decreases casting time while increasing break, break damage, mana, cooldown, recovery speed for set duration. So it doesn't say actual damage, it just says break damage. Um, but it also does instantly... Oh, it instantly resets your skill cooldown and it doesn't restore all your mana. Wait, hold on. Does it restore all your mana? Oh, well, you know, I should have done that after I did this. Alright. Yeah, it restores all your mana, so pretty much all your resources are restored upon activation. Uh, so that's also really good. Um, and so I would put this, in my opinion, as the first of the god tier uh, skills. I think it's underrated, although I do think it's becoming more popular, but if you have a good mage player, it's going to be super hard to contest this. Like, I've... I've tried doing it, I've tried having my partner and I uh, just chase down the one person who's has it, and as long as they have a good teammate, uh, or a decent teammate, I mean, it's it's gonna be difficult. Uh, and again, if you have a good witch player with this ultimate in their hands, like, it's gonna be scary to go against them. Like, you are going to want to run away. And, you know, if you're on a map where there's not that much room to run, or, you know, again, witch can chase you down sort of with a shift, or if you get caught in a black hole, I mean, you're sort of just done. Uh, so I would definitely put this in the godlike uh, tier. And so, we move on to DS, finally. We are out of the main four. So we will do DS, uh, and then of course Hammer after. So the first skill on DS, Massacre. Uh, it's not a great skill, uh, for many reasons. Uh, the AI of the tornado is sort of bad. It actually sometimes doesn't hit uh, the AI when it's supposed to, and it sometimes tracks absolutely horribly, and it's actually really easy to just avoid getting hit by it. As you can see there, it didn't do much damage. Uh, that did 5k, which is about as much damage as you'll get from a breaker ult one. Um, and not only that, but it actually lowers the enemy, so even if you use it um, while the enemy is in the air, so even if you wanted to try to do something like this, you could try going for a fully charged moon slash. But it doesn't actually lift them up when you do that, and I think they can still shift there. Um, so yeah, it 
it's not great uh, just overall. It's a pretty trash ultimate. There is a bug that makes it break more, but again, unless you're using it for CTF, which even still, it's super avoidable. And actually, if you do the skill, if you do the glitch that makes it breaks more, or that makes it break more, it actually does less damage, which the skill already does shit damage, um, or pretty bad damage. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, it's not really great overall in general. I don't think there's really anybody who actually thinks the skill is great. Uh, does it look cool? Yeah, it sort of looks cool, I guess. Um, because you summon a tornado, although it's a really tiny tornado. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just a really bad skill overall. Uh, it's somewhat better on CTF maybe, but even then, not really. It just feel it feeds resources to the enemies. Like I've actually ran into a massacre specifically so that I can just gain resources because I know it's not going to do much damage. Uh, and I think you can even like shift out of it sometimes without it actually uh, breaking you, and so you don't actually burn your emergency dodge. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is going to be a pretty easy one to put on the tier list. Uh, this is going to go in the BM only. Uh, yeah, use it if you really want to try to style on your opponents, although I think it's actually going to be hard to even try to use that skill to style. Um, so yeah, good luck with that. Um, so next up, though, is a much, much better ult. Uh, Soul Blade. So this is one of the better of the ult 2s, uh, and is vastly superior to the ult 1 on DS for a couple reasons. So for one, this does decent break, uh, and it... it Cast pretty immediately, and if you hit somebody, you actually do get a guaranteed follow-up. They can't shift uh, because it counts as a, uh, a ult hit, so they can't shift, and you can immediately get a uh, WW LMB follow-up, and then start a combo. And then, of course, your damage overall is increased, I believe, because of the swords um, that spawn uh, with the uh, commands, but it also changes how some of your commands function. Uh, so you summon these blades out uh, a little bit, which does a shit ton of damage. Um, and it's just really good for getting a lot of damage out there. Um, it also changes uh, the functionality of some of your skills. I don't know if that's on purpose though, to be honest. But you can literally like, you can crit slash somebody from a mile away, like it'll just do that. Um, I don't think this increases your armor at all, although again, you can use the blades and all that stuff. It does change how your moon slash functions to add extra damage and make it easier for you to combo with. Um, but yeah, it's definitely still a pretty good ult uh, to, I and mean, again, is vastly superior. And they also change the animation so you get these flying swords around you, which is really cool. Um, uh, and in general, it is definitely, I think, one of the cooler of the ult twos. Um, so that is interesting. Uh, so where would I put this uh, on the tier list? Uh, I definitely actually put it above. I think I'd put it in the pretty good category. Um, I'd probably put it above probably somewhere. I'm actually going to move Devoted Awakening above Bertle as well. Well, actually, no, I'll probably put it above Devoted Awakening because unlike even though Devoted Awakening can guarantee a combo, it you do, I think, still have to be a little closer than you would for DS. And of course, you're just going to do more damage as DS anyway. Uh, and so I, I think it's just a little bit above uh, because of that. Um, obviously, Devoted Awakening does have the armor stuff, which is all good. Uh, but having a free Slayer catch... Actually, you know what? No, I'll switch places, because I, I do think at least the Breaker uh, Devoted Awakening is safer um, in general. And I've seen people actually use this skill. They get a catch, they start comboing, and then they forget that there's another enemy. Uh, and then they get caught. So I'll actually put it, I'll put it in the pretty good tier, but I'm actually going to put this lower than Devoted Awakening. Yeah. I might change some of, the pla some of the places of the ultimates after I get everything in the tier list, but we'll see. Alright, so now we move on to Hammer. So, let's go back. So, Hammer, uh, our first ult is called Ultimate Hammer, I'm pretty sure. Uh, this is a pretty basic skill. You just choose your area with Q, left click to activate it. Nice little cutscene, and it lagged there a little bit. There's actually a frame drop there. Uh, so, let me try using it again. There we go. Um, 
So yeah, pretty cool skill. Actually does pretty decent damage, although it does vary a lot. I've seen it hit for like, if, if this skill crits, it'll crit for a lot. Like I've seen it do like 10k. So like that one did 6k, but I think I can, I'm like pretty sure I've seen it do higher. Let me see if I can get it any higher. So that did 7k. Um, but yeah, I, it, I've seen it crit for like 10 to 12k. Like it is disgusting how much damage this can do. Um, so it is something to be wary of. Uh, it is sort of easy to dodge. It's hard to punish though. The skill is actually really hard to punish. Uh, it, you're pretty much invulnerable for this whole entire duration until you shift. Like, oh, and that one did like 8.5 to 9k. Yeah. So it's actually a pretty decent skill. It doesn't have the best range. It also sometimes gets uh, blocked by terrain and it goes somewhere that you didn't actually want it to go, which is just a problem with a couple of ultimates. Uh, so it is sort of easy to miss it, but it's pretty safe, does pretty decent damage. You can't really combo off of it, uh, although I think it does sort of stun enemies now. I, I don't know, it sort of really slows down enemies for some reason now. Uh, although actually, they did sort of make it harder to dodge because they sped up the animation in-game. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's definitely a pretty decent one though overall. Um, and so I would put this on the tier list. I would put Hammer Ult 1. Uh, I'd probably put it above Raging Strike, maybe below Fist Alt 1 because you just can't combo with it, but although it doesn't really have much good team play, so actually I'll put it above Bird, but below Meteor. It does do more damage than Meteor, but you can't, Meteor has more uh, synergy, team synergy potential, which I think is really important, um, so... Uh, I'll put it right between Bird and Meteor. And now moving on to uh, Hammer Ult 2. So Hammer Ult 2 is Faith. Um, now this uh, skill does revive anybody near you. Um, well, actually not even near you. I think it just revives anybody regardless of where they are, uh, which is really nice. Um, and it also does make you deal a little bit of extra damage, it, it does do some tick damage, um, and it also actually slows down the enemy, it slows down their movement speed and their attack speed as long as they're in the circle. Um, it does also allow you to heal your gray health, you can't heal past it though, um, and outside that doesn't do much. It's not a great ult, in fact this is one of those ults that I personally put in the um, specific game mode ult because I don't think it's great for deathmatch, to be honest. I've seen people run it, but it's just not great because there's not really a reason to run it. You're not going to heal yourself any more than you already did. Um, you get to revive the enemy, but the cooldown or the cooldown to respawn in deathmatch has actually been decreased significantly. Like you respawn after like three, four, five seconds or something, which is really fast compared to how it was before. It used to be like eight seconds or something. Um, so it's not really as important in deathmatch. Uh, however, in like CTF or Conquest, it's actually a lot more important because if your your enemy or your teammate dies on point A and you're over at point B and you have ult, you can literally just cast your ult and then boom, your teammate's back on point A instantly again. Uh, and then of course CTF is super good because if the enemy is capping the flag, if you're the only person left, your teammates are dead, and there's three other people and one of them's capping the flag, you can just cast... You can cast... Um, Faith and just instantly respawn your teammates like right on top of the flag uh, and just prevent the cap. So it's really good for those game modes, but outside of that, not really that great. Um, and again, even in those game modes, it's only really used for sp specific purpose. Like you wouldn't use it to kill, you wouldn't use it um, to combo or catch anybody in particular because um, you can't even catch. It, it will break people, it actually has pretty high break, but it, they'll be able to shift away um, and run. Uh, and so because of that, I would obviously put this in the specific game mode only tier list. Um, again, it's good in specific game modes deathmatch though, which is sort of the focus of this tier list, not so much. Um, and so now we move on to, uh, I believe, cannon. So let us move on to that. Yeah, it is cannon. Alright, cool. So, cannon. Yes, it is Cannon and Scythe next. Uh, oh, actually, I can't do Scythe on this character because I only have Scythe Alt 1, so I will be moving to another character for that. Um, so I will just do Cannon on this one. Alright, so 
cannon alt one is called atomic blast and they actually recently buffed it sort of it was more of a fix apparently you were able to rage break out of this skill um but uh yeah so the way the skill works is you hit q and then you get this little target thing you left click where you want it to go and then it shoots a laser beam uh and it deals decent damage i actually don't know if i might have missed hitting the ai directly so let me try hitting them directly yeah, so that did around, like, it does anywhere from 5 to 7k. Not too bad damage. Uh, it is, I don't think it's possible to combo off of it, because it does have a lot of end lag. Like, it looks like it might be possible, actually. I sort of messed up there, but... Hmm, probably not. Um, but it does do decent damage, and it's actually really hard to dodge this if the enemy knows what they're doing with it because say like if the opponent dodges to the left or something like if i um if, if i cast a skill and they try to move i can change the direction mid cast and shoot it where they're shifting to and they'll end up getting hit by it they might not take full damage but it, it'll still hit them um and so because of that it's sort of nice uh, i also think i don't know what the range is on this i don't know if it has Seemingly infinite range doesn't look like it. It does look like it has a range limit. Oh, maybe not actually. I don't know um, But it, it seems like it's got pretty good range uh, pretty good break. I think um, And it does decent damage. I uh, you, your teammates can probably combo off of it if they're ready, but honestly, they're probably not going to be uh, So I don't think it has the combo potential as a couple of the other old ones do which is I think the major problem with it uh, but it does do decent damage, they can't rage break out of it now, and you can frame trap. Uh, I also believe you're completely safe using this skill. I don't... I've very rarely seen somebody get punished, yeah. It, it's pretty hard to punish that skill as well. Uh, so, it's sort of in line with Hammer, actually. Uh, and so, in terms of where I'd put it on the tier list, I think I'd actually just put it right below Hammer, then. So... I pro I, I'm putting it below Hammer because Hammer ends up doing around the same damage as this one, and since you're in Breaker, even if you do possibly get punished, it's going to be safer for you anyway. Um, uh, and so th that's probably why, but they're actually pretty close, I think. Uh, and I'll see the Hammer one probably has a little bit bigger range, so I don't know. Actually, the Cannon one might do more damage, I just realized my Cannon is level 3, um, so that is something to be aware of, uh, so it might actually do more damage, but the, it is still, I think, a fairly small radius, you can miss it, um, again, you can track dodges, which is something Hammer Alt 1 can't really do, uh, but Hammer Alt 1, I think, comes out a little bit faster anyway, so that's why I probably just put it a little higher, um, and so, yeah. Alright, so now we have Cannon Alt 2, so Cannon Alt 2 is called bullet time and this one is it's a little bit uh weird it's not bad uh if it hits uh it actually did get significantly nerfed due to the combo uh and damage accumulation and combo limit it does look pretty cool though i like the animation on it um and of course if you just spam left kick you can start doing a lot of damage um let's see how much it does now before the combo limit kicks in so around 17k, that's not too bad, um, but obviously you used to be able to actually 100 to 0 people with it. I still think it's pretty strong though, um, although it isn't guaranteed, so even though it does stun the opponent, they actually can shift out if you notice the stun duration to when I start left clicking, they can actually shift out before then. However, if they don't, they will be broken really quickly, and uh, I will deal a significant amount of damage to them. And of course, my damage isn't even fully maxed out on cannon so maybe I could squeeze an 18 or 19k if I get all the hits um, but of course uh, this is a stance so if I do have to shift I actually have to wait to go back into it a little bit although actually that's pretty good um, I don't even know okay there we go now I got back into the stance and it doesn't use any of your cannons which is nice as well seems like it lasts a pretty long time as well um, but obviously you can be peeled during it, it's not even guaranteed even if you do stun people, so it does have that downside, and I think more recently now people have been running it less and less because of the fact that the stun isn't guaranteed, uh, you can shift out of it now, it used to be you couldn't even shift out of it if you were hit by it, 
Um, and so uh, because of that, I'd probably put it... I think it's still viable, sort of similar to like Bowalt 2. Um, but I think Bowalt 2 even locks on more. I'd probably put it at like the bottom of the viable tier list. Uh, I still think you can make pretty decent plays out of it. Um, you just need a teammate is really all. And that's sort of the thing with Cannon, at least that's how it was with old Cannon, is you sort of needed a teammate to set up, and it's the same thing for Witch. Like, you need a good teammate. Um, if you don't have a good teammate, you're not going to get very far. Uh, but it's still... If, if you hit somebody, if you're able to break somebody and hit somebody with it, it will deal a lot of damage. So, you know, I think it's still a decent skill. People are trying to dislike it more and more, I think, but again, it's still pretty good. Uh, and so, next up will be Scythe, but I'm going to move on to another character for that. Alright, so we have Scythe now on my other character. Uh, and also, actually, I guess I didn't really go over the coolness of some of the uh, skills, so I actually want to do that real quick. Um, I think I stopped that Witch. Uh, DS skills, uh, Soul Blade is definitely, I think, cooler overall than uh, Massacre, although I think I actually did mention that. Hammer skills, I do think Ultimate Hammer 1 looks pretty cool, especially with the action camera. Faith. They did change the animation on it actually a little bit, and I sort of like it better now. Um, but it's still not like that great overall, it doesn't do anything crazy. Uh, cannon, bullet time, I think the animation looks pretty cool. Uh, and the stance is sort of interesting, and of course all the explosive nature, but it, outside of that, it's sort of boring. And Cannon Ult 1 is a little weird looking in my opinion. It's not bad, but it is sort of weird looking. So that that's sort of my critiques on uh, how they look. Um, but let's get back to Scythe. Alright, so Scythe Ult 1 is called Dimension Cutter. Uh, and this skill has been changed, or was changed uh, at one point, and it now essentially leads to a combo when you cast it. And it has an interesting action camera. Deals a decent amount of damage, actually, more than I was suspecting. And you get a follow up, which is really nice as well. I also love how I didn't get a blow there, even though I'm supposed to. The Scythe blow is uh, not consistent. But. Um, it is there. Uh, so, definitely not a bad skill, although it is very similar to Raging Strike in the sense that if you whiff, uh, it is punishable uh, when you whiff it. However, unlike Raging Strike, if you do hit it, it is actually almost impossible to punish because they can act out pretty soon. Like, you can actually just shift out, um, unlike Raging Strike. So, in that sense, it's actually a little bit better. However, it does have less range. It's not as easy to con uh, have any team synergy with it because it doesn't last as long. But you get a free catch off of it, which is really nice instead. Um, and so because of that, uh, and I think it actually has less overall range than um, Sword Alt 1 Raging Strike. Uh, and so because of that, I'd probably put it in the tier list. I would probably actually put it below Raging Strike. Just because even though it is safer, it's uh, it did do around the same amount of damage, actually. Maybe I'd put it above, um, just because of the fact that I think um, uh, Raging Strike, again, it does have the team play, but, I mean, chances are you can still do some team synergy with Scythe Ult 1, and you get free catch, and it's just safer anyway, so. I don't know, I think that Scythe Ult 1 actually might be a little bit better than Raging Strike. Uh, and it seems to do around the same amount of damage anyway. I mean, here, we can even test. Let's see how much it does on an actual hammer player, because I am doing it on sword. So let's switch the AI to hammer. See how much it does. Again, you do have to be pretty close, but... Yeah, that still did, like, Raging Strike damage. And, again, it's arguably safer. It leads to a combo. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a pretty good position for it. Um, and so next up we have Soul Connection. Uh, now this is a skill. It does break, but it doesn't really lead to a combo. They do have. It might force a shift. Not really. Too sure. To be honest, though, I think it sort of ruins your combos. Like half the time, I can't even hit the person because the demon extra thing like sends them so far away, and I end up losing out on a couple of hits. And it also changes the animation, but it does, I think, enhance your damage. Didn't really seem like it enhanced my damage there, though. Uh, it doesn't increase your base endurance. It does increase your movement speed a little bit, from what I've heard. Um, not too sure about your action speed. 
but um, yeah, it's not a great ultimate in my opinion. Uh, it does it doesn't even affect your RMB commands at all, which is actually probably a good thing. Um, but it's just not great in my opinion. Again, it does it, it just becomes more annoying, but yeah, it's not great. And again, some of the commands stun, but it's like whatever. I don't know. Um, that actually might hurt you depending on whether you're another person ults or not. So, uh, in my opinion, I'm probably going to put this in the BM only tier list. I uh, I just don't see much use for it. I, I'd put it above Massacre because at least it's on a breaker, so it's safer and you know maybe you get in some extra damage there, more damage than you would with Massacre. So, I guess there's that, but. You don't get increased endurance, so you can still be caught as easily as you normally would. It doesn't affect any of your skills. Um, I actually think, like, Devoted Awakening, I think, affects Wild Flurry, maybe? And it does, even if it doesn't actually affect the skills with the explosions, it still gives each skill more endurance anyway. Um, so, in general, and of course, like, Devoted Awakening is literally, it does everything Soul Connection does, except better in, like, every way, and more. Because it gives you extra stuff on your commands, um, it gives you the extra movement speed, but then Devoted Awakening has the extra being the increased endurance, the specific, the, or the command that you get when you uh, go into it, which allows you to deal a lot of damage. Um, so it's just, it's not a great skill. I don't recommend people run this if they are running Scythe. Um, and so there's that. Next up, we have Orb. So Orb, uh, we'll do... Orbolt 1, which is Spirit Bomb. Now, actually, this is a pretty powerful skill on release, mainly because of the fact that wherever you casted it, it just instantly like appeared there. Like It was almost impossible to dodge uh, at one point. Um, but they did make it more dodgeable now, but it's still a pretty big skill, and it's still sort of hard to dodge, I think. And the animation looks nice. Um, doesn't deal that much damage, though. I mean, even on a Magical Breaker, that they'll only around 6k. It is really safe, though. Uh, I don't actually know if you can combo with this one. I think you might be able to. Uh, it does set up for team play, though. Actually, yeah, I think you can combo off of it, so that's actually nice. Uh, it seems a little bit RNG where they might go, uh, but it seems like you definitely can combo off of it. Uh, which is nice, but again, it does set up for some team synergy. Actually, they can cast skills into it. Uh, it does last a little while, um, so that's also nice. And it's completely safe, it seems like. And it looks like you can also get a combo off of it, potentially. Uh, so it's actually not bad. Not a bad skill. Doesn't do insane damage, though. Um, obviously, this might be different if I did it on a uh, you know, a sword or a uh, physical breaker. It might obviously do more. Um, yeah, that did around 6, 7k. That's not too bad. Um, but definitely not a bad skill. And so because of that, I'd actually probably put this in the pretty good tier list. I'd probably put it maybe above Meteor. Maybe even above, would I put it above Raging Strike? It doesn't do as much damage as Raging Strike, but it is safer. Um, yeah, I'd probably put it above Raging Strike for now. Again, I, there's a bunch of stuff I might change here. Uh, after I put in all the skills, but um, yeah, so we'll see. Next up is, I think, a another contender for god tier, um, in my opinion. Uh, it is Orbolt 2, so first of all, what's so good about this skill? Well, first of all, uh, it is a free catch. You immediately get a catch, you immediately get a combo, and you can catch multiple people at the same time, which means your teammates can also start a combo. Um, so you get a free combo starter, which is fantastic uh, and is obviously super valuable and you can get a lot of damage in because of that. Um, another thing is the uh, ult actually not only catches for you and breaks a lot of things, it also buffs you. Uh, and in fact, I don't remember exactly what the buff does. So it increases your crit chance, which I knew about, uh, dramatically as far as I know, like almost 100% crit chance. Uh, increases your recovery rate of stamina and mana, which are also extremely useful. But I think the part about it that makes it insane, and in my opinion, god tier, is the fact that not only does this doesn't apply to yourself, it applies to everybody, and I don't actually think it matters where they are in the map, it will apply to them. Um, and 
another thing about it is you can actually switch to breaker and it will still apply you still have uh, you don't have to worry about um, switching to breaker and not having it you will get the endurance on your breaker or you will get the uh, stamina and mana regen as well as the crit chance on your breaker as well um, which means that you can now deal extra damage on your breaker which is nice um, and so because of that, I think this is another contender for God tier just because of how uh, versatile it is and how amazing it is for team play, team combos. Uh, again, it's a super safe skill. You can't even punish ult 2, I believe. It's completely safe. So even if this whiffs, you can just shift out. Obviously it doesn't do that much damage, but the fact that in ult 2 that buffs you does damage in the first place is already pretty crazy. I mean, that already does 3k damage. I don't know why it does. It doesn't really need to, but it does. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, that's pretty crazy. Um, so, yeah. Uh, on the tier list, i definitely put this uh, in the godlike. Honestly, I'd probably put this above Demonic Awakening, because it's just, in my opinion, better, because it applies to everybody. I mean, imagine if Demonic Awakening applied to everybody. That would be crazy. Um, and so, yeah, there's that. Uh, and so now we move on to shield, so I will have to switch back to my other character for that, so hold on. Alright, we are back um, with sword and shield, and so the first ult we have is land slasher. I didn't actually think it was called that, I thought it was called land demolisher, is that what the other one is? Land crusher. Hmm, I don't know. Weird. Um, but anyway, so this skill, you hit Q and you aim out and send a wave uh, that launches the opponent, so it actually stuns them first and then it launches them. And you can combo off of this, though they do need to be close, but you do get a combo, which is nice. Um, another thing though is you can actually turn, uh, similar to the bird ult one on bow, you can actually turn this mid-cast, um, and you can actually track dodges with this, so it actually does become pretty good at reading dodges, it's, and if you know what you're doing, you can actually hit a person even if they do try to dodge it. Um, because I think there's also a shockwave that actually comes after, so even if the, you miss uh, them with the first stun of it, they can be hit by the shockwave, which will send them up anyway, allowing you for a combo. Um, and of course you can hit multiple people with it. Um, it. There is some team play with it as well because of that. It does send them pretty high, so it is easier for your teammates to catch them when they come back down. Um, it does do a decent amount of damage. Not much, but it does do a decent amount. Uh, around anywhere from like 4 to 6k. Um, obviously it might be more on a magical breaker, so let's see how much does it do here. Oh wow, that one actually did a significant amount. Jesus. I, I, maybe I just got lucky there. Yeah, I'm thinking I just got lucky there. I must have just gotten a really good crit. But um, yeah, that was really good damage. Uh, so apparently it has potential for really good damage, but I think that is like most ultimates in the game. Um, and so, uh, because of it though, uh, it's also safe, uh, which is nice, so you can't really be punished even if you miss the skill. Um, and so because of that, I'm probably going to put this in the pretty good tier list. Um, I'd probably put it maybe above, it's a little bit harder, it's not as guaranteed, well, I'd, I'd probably put it above Scythe Alt 1 because I think it has just a lot more range. Um, and it can still track dodges, uh, similar to this, some of the other ults in this category. Um, and it does decent damage. Obviously it doesn't do as much as Scythe Ult 1 or uh, Orb Ult 1. But, you can hit multiple people with it. It's easier to hit multiple people with it. It has a lot more range than these two. Uh, and you can still combo with it. Uh, you can still combo with it, and it's completely safe, regardless of whether you whiff or not. Uh, unlike Scythe Ult 1. Um, and it's easier for Team Synergy compared to Orb Ult 1. Um, Although, I can cast Orbolt 1 anyway. Actually, maybe I'd put Orbolt 1 there. I don't know. There's still some changes I, I might make. So, But uh, for now, we'll, we'll, we'll continue adding to this. Uh, we do only have one more ult left anyway. Uh, and this, of course, is going to be another most likely god tier ult. Uh, now, by the time this video is uploaded, it might be... I think it's supposed to be nerfed. Um, although, I still think, at most, it's going to go down to the pretty good category. But this skill is... it's disgusting. Uh, you cast it, they cannot dodge out, because it just lasts so long that even, like, unless you're cannon or scythe, you're not going to be able to dodge this. It's like instant activation, um, you can't really react to it, it comes out so fast. Um, 
And even if you do anticipate it, even if you do somehow sort of react to it and shift out, again, the range is way too big. They are nerfing it, but again, if you're already close to the person, there's a chance that it might just still suck you in. So, and you'll get stunned. And then, of course, if you get stunned, uh, you get stunned for like three seconds. I get to do a fully charged moon slash. I can like emo on you. Um, actually, I think I can. I'm pretty sure I can. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can emo on you and still almost be able to combo you. Uh, but I can charge a fully, or I can do a full charge moon slash off of that. Uh, which is insane. That should not be allowed. Uh, and they are adjusting, they are nerfing the stun on it, um, so that'll help prevent hopefully some moon slashes. Although if you have a teammate and you prepare the ult one, you're still going to be able to get it going. Um, and they only nerfed it by a second, so again we'll see. But it's still gonna, the skill is still gonna have super insane uh, team play. Um, and even solo play because it's a guaranteed combo. It's also completely safe. The skill is completely safe regardless of whether you whiff it or not. Um, and right as it is right now, before they nerf it, it is essentially there's no counterplay to it. You just get hit by it. Um, honestly, the best counterplay I've seen is if you launch somebody or if you're up really high, try to stay as high as you can above it because it doesn't have the best vertical hitbox. Um, it also doesn't have the best... Um, well, I guess that would be vertical. If you're below, if the person's on like higher terrain than you, it might not hit you if you're lower than them as well. So there is that, but it's just, it's insanely good. It doesn't deal that much damage, obviously. I think it only deals, what, yeah, two, anywhere from like two to three, maybe 4k if you're lucky, but it still leads to a full catch, um, and it catches like everybody. Uh, and again, it has pretty good range. Even when they nerf it, it might still be pretty good. Um, and again, as it is right now, I'm putting it, going to put it in god tier because it is just absolutely insane to contest right now. Uh, I'd probably, I'm probably going to put it at the top because right now, going into Moonslash, that's an instant 10k damage. None of the other god tier ones can guarantee 10k. Uh, this is the only one that can actually guarantee that. Um, even if you hit it. Um, alright, so we have everything set. So let's see if I want to make some changes. Let's see. So I might cut to when I make all my changes. Also, I just want to say, uh, while I was recording this, apparently I was disconnected from the server. Not really too sure why. Uh, I don't think that there's a plan maintenance. So uh, yeah, there's that. All right. So I think this will pro. I, I think I'm happy with this tier list. So I did make some changes. I put some stuff. Uh, I moved some stuff to other places, um, so I'll go through it from bottom to top. Uh, Soul Connection and Massacre I still have, the still have at the bottom. Uh, those were always at the bottom. Or I, I had already played some at the bottom, and I, I think they're just just—they're not really that great. I almost was considering putting Massacre in specific game mode only, because it is better in CTF, but it's still not amazing. Uh, and... Uh, I did move bullet time actually from viable to BM only because I realized, like, I didn't even actually realize you can't use skills during it. So if you, if somebody gets close to you and you shift, like, it's gonna be hard for you to get any mileage with the skill if you're getting chased. Because unlike uh, Witch Ult 2, De uh, Demonic Awakening, you don't have any escape options. Uh, you're sort of stuck in the stance. Now, you can get out of it if you do a shift attack, but, like, I don't know, you're sort of forced to tab. Like, once you do a shift attack, if anybody's chasing you, you're essentially forced to tab, and if you tab, you're essentially removing your buff that you spent your whole rage bar on anyway. So, um, in, in my opinion, it's actually, I think, a worse ultimate than I originally thought it was, uh, and so that's why I have it in the BM only tier. Still does a shit ton of damage, uh, but it's if you're being chased down at all, they will shut you down. Like, you won't be able to use the skill. Um, Faith, I think, is still justified at being there. I don't really disagree with where I have it. I don't really have any, um, or I don't, I'm pretty content with where it is. Uh, and then in the viable tier, uh, I did try to order, so this stuff is sort of ordered from right to left in terms of, actually, if it is ordered from right to left, let me do that. Or, actually, yeah, no. If it is ordered from right to left, um, with right being like at the bottom of that tier and then left being at the top of that tier. Um, so yeah, so I think BM only from right to left is that makes sense. Uh, and then in the viable, yeah, so we have bow ult too, which again, I think it's pretty good because of poke, but outside that, I mean, if you get caught, you're sort of just caught. 
Uh, I think Sword is a little bit better because, you know, you get more range, you're in Breaker, and you get to deal more damage, which is always nice to do while you're in Breaker, and again, you get ridiculous range. If you're Storm Slashing, you're pretty much uncontestable. Uh, of course, though, um, oh, and you also get a catch. Like, if you hit somebody with the skill, you do get a free catch and combo. Uh, so it is pretty nice. Um, but, of course, it does have the downside of you might be able to get caught, um, and... Outside of the damage and the range, it actually doesn't do that much uh, compared to some of the other ultis. Um, so that's probably also why I have it here. Um, I have cannon ult 2 or ult 1 here because it does do pretty decent damage, but it doesn't really allow any follow up. It is pretty safe, but it doesn't really allow any team synergy either, or at least not, nothing easy. Um, and again, its range isn't too big. Like, it's got long range, but it doesn't have wide range, so it's going to be hard to hit multiple people with it. I think it does have a little bit of suction, but again, not great. Um, it does track dodges, but again, not amazing, but it's still pretty good. It's much better than bullet time, in my opinion, right now. Uh, then we have Soul Blade. Again, it does pretty decent damage, allows for a catch, um, and Crit Slash becomes insane, because you get to go across the map with it. Uh, and you get to do uh, just extra damage on everything. Um, but you're in DS, so you do still have to be careful. You can be caught. However, of course, DS has knockback, uh, insane knockback right now, so it's harder to combo. Well, not right now. It's always had insane knockback. Uh, so it's just harder to combo DS in general. Um, and so, yeah, that's why. But I think... I don't even know. I feel like I want to move... I feel like I want to move Sword Ult 2. I don't even know if I want to put Sword Ult 2 above Soul Blade, because I feel like Soul Blade is easier to catch with. Like, I think it's harder to react to Soul Blade than it is to react to um, Sword Ult 1 or Sword Ult 2, although you can still track dodges with this one. Um, I don't know how well you can do that with Soul Blade. Maybe I'll put it above it. Um, yeah, and I, I I still think these two might end up being better than uh, Cannon Ult 1, because it's just Cannon Ult 1, I feel like. Again, even though it might do good damage, you don't get anything off of it. Like, there are a bunch of other Ult 1s that... Like, all, all of the Ult 1s in pretty good category essentially um, either allow for some sort of follow-up, are pretty safe or do significant damage, like more damage than Cannon Ult 1 does. And again, maybe Cannon Ult 1 can do good damage. Uh, oh, and they also all have like a um, lot wider range and they can hit multiple targets easier. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and that's why I have Scythe Ult 1 at the top because it's almost as good as all of the ones in pretty good. Like, it does pretty decent damage, but it doesn't have the wide range. And it, it does lead to a combo, which is also a plus, which is why I have it at the top of the viable one. Um, it does do pretty good damage, but you do need to be pretty close to actually get all the hits in, and if you're not close, it they might actually be able to shift out, or just the, the actual like swing down won't connect, and then there won't be a combo. And of course, it is still punishable on whiff, uh, similar to Raging Strike, uh, so it still has some counterplay as well. Um, so that's why it's there. And then in the pretty good tier, we have from right to left, Devoted Awakening, which I just have here because, again, it's, I think, a really good buff right now. Probably one of the best of all the Breaker Ult 2 buffs. Um, it's just, you get so much armor, so much movement speed, your damage increases, you get the special command, which does, like, 10k. And all you have to do is land an RMB charger, shift attack, and you just instantly deal 10k damage just by tapping WW. And then you can continue the combo after that, which is crazy. Uh, but then, of course, above that I have Bird Ult 1, which it's still a little bit... It, it is unsafe, but it does deal more damage uh, and has a pretty big range, which is why I have it above Devoted Awakening, just because it is such, like... Even though it can be punished, Devoted Awakening can't, but uh, it's just the bird hitbox is so big, and you can still combo with it, uh, and it can hit multiple people, and sometimes it has a surprisingly big hitbox... Uh, which I've seen even uh, the top players get hit by because they do not expect it. Uh, and of course you can turn it mid-cast, so it's also really hard to dodge it uh, if you're not close to the person already. Um, then we have Hammer Ult 1, uh, which I think has really wide range. Can have extremely high damage potential. I've, again, I've seen it hit for like 10 or 12k, and it's just like, it's disgusting. Like, on a physical breaker, by the way. Um, and... 
of course, it's completely safe, has pretty good range, um, and, uh, pretty good, uh, like, pretty good, like, range, uh, horizontally, as well as, like, along all of the axes, pretty much. Um, now, it, the downside is that the skill, again, sometimes misplaces by accident due to terrain and all that, but, again, it's completely safe, regardless of whether you hit somebody or not, which is nice. Um, but it doesn't allow for any team play, like some of the other ones in the pretty good category, which is why I don't really have it as high. Uh, then we have Witch Holt 1, which does decent damage, but mainly it's just got really good range and really good team synergy, which is why it's sort of right in the middle. Um, and it, it is punishable, uh, but you can sort of make it safer by casting it on yourself, which is nice. Uh, and you, you yourself can combo off of it as well as your team. Uh, and then we have Raging Strike. Uh, you can't combo off of it by yourself, and it is punishable whether you hit it or not. But it does so much damage and allows for so much team synergy. It's just such a staple skill. Um, like, it deals literally double the damage uh, as Meteor does on a Physical Breaker anyway. Um, so it's just it does so much good damage and such good, uh, such good team synergy that I have to include it uh, in the pretty good tier. Uh, then we have Shield Alt 1, which... Again, not that many people consider it, but I actually think it's pretty good. It, I think it actually offers pretty good team synergy, because, um, again, of how high it launches people, so, like, anybody can catch. Like, you, it's literally just, like, tossing money into the air. Like, anybody can catch that shit. Like, it just wait for it to fall down or something and just launch them again. Like, it's pretty good. Pretty safe. It has the same thing as uh, Bird Ult 1 and uh, Cannon Ult 1, where you can sort of change the direction of it mid-cast. Um, to track shifts, which is nice, and again, it's completely safe whether you hit it or not, and you get a free combo if you're close enough to the person, which is nice by yourself. So because of that, um, and it, uh, it can do decent damage actually. It, apparently, it hit the hammer player for like 10k, which is crazy, uh, and so that's why I have it above raging strike. Then of course we have spirit orb, which I think it's just it's got good range. Uh, your teammates can combo off of it, it lasts long enough for them to recognize and combo off of it. Apparently you yourself can, although it is a bit RNG. It does decent damage, um, but uh, also obviously it breaks a lot. Um, although it doesn't really, you can dodge out. Actually, I might, I think I'm going to put Shield Ult 1 above it, just because of the fact that I think you can combo with Shield Ult 1 a little easier than you can with Spirit uh, or uh, Orb Ult 1, so... But it is still pretty good skill, uh, and again, good team synergy, uh, and it's also it's completely safe, uh, which is also nice. That's why I have it above Raging Strike. It's completely safe, whether you hit or not. And then of course we have Fistult One, which it's just it's still really good in combo with it, although it is harder. Um, I'd actually maybe I'll put Shield Alt One at the top then because uh, although this one's more versatile, I think. Yeah, never mind. Fistol One is just super versatile, especially for other game modes, although, again, this is more focused on deathmatch, um, but it is more versatile for other game modes as well. Uh, it, you can combo off of it, especially if there's a wall nearby, it's super easy to combo with it. Um, it's very safe, very hard to actually punish. Um, you can obviously react to it if you whiff it, but you, that's true for a lot of the other ultimates as well. Um, it's just that this one you can't punish. So... That's probably why I have it high, and it still does decent damage. Doesn't do that much, but if it already leads to a combo, uh, it does like about as much damage as Shield Alt One. Uh, and it, unlike Shield Alt One, I'd actually say that it offers a little bit more in the team play and uh, team play and team synergy category because it does stun the opponents for a decent amount of time. So you can stun them for two seconds. Your uh, your teammates can then recognize, oh, these people are stunned, and then you can do the return fall and launch them, and then your teammates can continue the combo uh, and stuff like that, which is really nice. Uh, so I think it's still a really good skill, and that's why I have it at the top of the pretty good category. Then we have the godlike ones, where we have Devoted Awakening, uh, the Soul of Magus uh, Ult 2, or the Orb Ult 2, and Shield Ult 2, um, which again will be nerfed and will probably go down to the pretty good category, but uh, there's not really too much order to these from right to left or left to right. Uh, I probably will have Shield Ult 2 though at like the top of the top because it's just so good as I uh, as of me recording this video. Um, but Devoted Awakening is still absolutely amazing. It's so scary to contest. Like 
you know, if you think Bobo 2 is, you know, really spammy and uh, very problematic, it's just, like, take that and then just double every, like, everything on it. Just It's just so good. It, it, Witch Hole 2 is actually just really good and really hard to contest. Like, it's just not, it's really not worth trying to contest it. I keep trying, but it's not worth it. Um, and then, of course, you have Orbolt 2, which is just, it, it's the best buff in the game. Like, for everyone, it's just the best buff. Um, you essentially have infinite resources, uh, you essentially get infinite, like, it increases your overall uh, damage, which is great uh, with the combo and damage accumulation system, you want as much extra damage as you can get, um, so that's also nice. And then of course you have shield ult too, which leads to a 10k moon slash, uh, so in a sense, uh, this uh, shield ult 2, as of me again recording, does around 10,000 damage because of that, as long as you have DS. And then, of course, if you have more than one DS player, uh, it can do, like, 20k damage, uh, which is insane. And it's completely safe on whiff or on uh, if it hits. Uh, and it is actually really hard to react to, really hard to dodge. Uh, it doesn't really have much counterplay. Uh, the best counterplay I've been told is let someone get hit by it, just not both people, which is not good counterplay in my opinion. Uh, and so that's why it is at the top of my tier list. Um, again, so... Thank you guys for watching. Again, this was my opinion, uh, so I would love to know your own opinions about what you would put, or which category you would put your skills, uh, or the ultimate skills into, and which skills you think are uh, better, or which ones you think are worse. Uh, feel free to comment uh, in the comment section down below. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. See ya.